Uh, James, can you talk about what practice has been like this week um, since the, the loss and also defensively, what kind of things you guys have worked on to get better in that regard? Um, yeah, you hit it right on the note uh, with defense. Um, yeah, it's been really intense this week, trying to get back to how we were early on in the season with our defense being a top 30 team uh, in the defensive rankings. Um, we've kind of slipped in how we used to be in the beginning of the season. So that's been our main focus this week in practice, just maintaining our defense and getting back to how we used to be in crowding the court, making the court smaller for other teams. And um, that's pretty much been it. And um, just just being who we are, you know, um, I think we kind of got out of our element while in Providence and during our last other uh, past games. And uh, we've just been trying to get back to how we were. One of the issues has been the fouling in the front court. Mm -hmm. Can you talk um, specifically about yourself and things that you've worked on or things you can do to minimize fouls? Yeah, um, I know myself, I, I had a lot of silly fouls, um, not guarding within how we guard in our system, um, doing things that we we're not taught to do. Um, and that's upon myself to get better at. And um, yeah, as a team, um, we just we just had to get back into our element, just where we we know how to guard. Um, we shrink the court. We help each other out. Nobody's just guarding one on one. Everybody's guarding somebody, and raw eyes and ears with each other. And um, to have trust in our teammates to be there and help side with us. So I mean, we just got back to that. Hey, after that loss, coach said you guys couldn't be the YMCA team. He was pretty upset. Is that hard to hear? Um, yeah, but at the same time, it's, I mean, the way we played, I mean, it might be believable that day, I mean, but, <laughs> I mean, but, no, we, we've made major improvements this week in practice, um, hopefully it doesn't feel like that now after this week, um, so, um, we, we feel pretty confident going in tomorrow's game, so. Uh, you know, I haven't been to the Y, um, in Cincinnati yet, but I'll make that a, uh, top priority on my list now. Because you had the week off and because you're coming off a loss, which he said was obviously poor defensively, was he able to kind of break you guys down this weekend, build you back up, back yeah. to the fundamentals kind of? Yeah, most definitely. Um, he was very smart about how he went into practice, knowing we've played a lot of games so far and um, we still have a lot of more games to play. And um, he didn't want to totally burn us out, but he wanted us to, to get back to how we were in the beginning of the season. And that was a, a hard working defensive mindset team. And um, I think we've gotten back to that level, and um, we're just ready to prove it on Saturday tomorrow. Samaj, James said, you know, get back to who you guys are. How does a team fall out of being that team right in the middle of a season? Uh, I said we probably got lazy or, or cool because we was winning a couple of games, so we they kind of just took our foot off the gas and wasn't always locked in. You know, some plays we were, let the team get an easy bucket, but before we wouldn't, we wouldn't give up easy, easy shots or easy layups. It was just, I, I just think we need to just lock in more on every possession. And we we'd be back to the to the team Coach Mack wants us to be. James, tell me about the, over the last year, your confidence helps just continue to rise here, and just talk about how you've embraced that that high energy role that that guy who comes off the bench and just gets everything. Um, yeah, I just I, I just really play for my teammates, you know. Um, I don't want to be that guy that comes in and be a liability because they don't think I'm going to play my hardest or they don't think I can guard a certain person or whatever the case may be. I don't want to be a liability to my teammates and for them to put to put them in a bad situation or us in a bad situation to, to be able to lose a game. Um, when I come in, I, I make the most of what I – can do out there. I know how it feels to not play. So when I get in, I know I have to cherish every moment and and do what I have to do to make sure my teammates and I are in the best way to win the game. And um, and that only builds confidence for yourself. When you know you you've done all you can do, and your teammates recognizes it, and your coaches recognize it. Um, it just makes you humble, um, and it just makes you wants to makes you want to work harder as well. And that's all I've been doing this year. Samaje, how's your toe, and what exactly happened when you hurt it in the Providence game? Uh, my toe was fine. Um, during the game, I kind of just ran into the, uh, the guy's foot, kind of, I guess, bruised it or whatever. But it's, it's fine. I'll be, I'll be okay. So. 
You're getting ready to play a team that's known for breaking streaks, home game winning streaks. They did it at Providence and then at Georgetown. So, I mean, as you guys head into this game, you talked about your defense. What else do you need to do to um, kind of be the team that you were earlier this year against Seton Hall? Uh, I don't really think we need to do too much. As long as we lock in and do the thing the coaches tell us to do and be focused when game time come, I think we, I think we, we fine. I know we, we won't be able to outscore every team or any team, but as long as we play defense, I feel like our offense will take care of everything we need to take care of. So. Chris, how, how's your week of practice been? Good. Good. You mentioned, you know, you really want to get back into that, uh, the fundamentals of, of the defense and, and getting that. How do you do that during, during, during the week? Well, we've had a lot of time off between, you know, uh, last game and this game tomorrow. Um, it's, it's a lot more difficult if you have a one-day or two-day turnaround than it is when you have a lot more time with your own team. Um, there's, there's less attention paid to your opponent when uh, you're talking about Monday and Tuesday uh, when you play Saturday. So in that regard, it was, um, uh, it was what was needed. You know, we... we did a lot of drills that involved guarding the basketball, one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, uh, things that you might normally do uh, more in preseason. Uh, but again, still has to manifest itself on the, on the basketball court in ga on game day. Is there any way to get a feel for that, that, that it will happen on game day when you're going through a week of practice to get a feel? Uh, maybe some coaches might get that feel, George. I, I don't. Um, you know, I, I, it's been... Uh, number one, it's been emphasized from day one, so it's not like you know this big rejuvenation. Hey, let's let's start paying attention to the defensive side of the ball. It's what we do every day. Uh, but again, we've had more time to to focus on our mistakes and things we have to correct. Um, but again, that has to happen, um, you know, when it matters the most on game day. And again, I, I don't necessarily, I can't say that I'm not one that's going to give any guarantees, um, but. Uh, you know we'll be we'll be ready to go to the bench a lot sooner if it's if it's not addressed. Uh, Chris, one of the guys that's been playing really well for Seton Hall is Fuquan Edwin. He's done really well the last two games, but um, not only a scoring threat, but a very good defensive threat. Lots of steals per game. What kind of challenges does he present? Oh, he's a great player. You know, I remember him when he was a freshman um, at the Virgin Islands. He's uh, always had that reputation as a guy that can um, go on runs by himself. Um, he's an excellent catch and shoot three point shooter, but he's not limited. He can put it on the floor. He can get to the rim, uh, and then on the defensive end, I think he's you know one of the best in our league um, at turning teams over. You know, just playing the passing lanes. He's gotten the uh, that experience of knowing what action's coming, what a team's trying to look for, and he has long arms and uh, very great anticipation. So, uh, you know, you got to be smart with the basketball when you're around him, uh, when you're when you're passing to the man he's guarding. And, and again, uh, on the defensive end for us, it's going to be a big challenge. What have you seen in film watching Seton Hall that you guys think you could take advantage of on tomorrow? Um, you know, I, we're going to be who we are no matter who we play. Uh, they're a man-to-man -man team. You know, they, they have certain tendencies that, uh, you know, we – uh, have to try to take advantage of. I'm not going to put that out in the media the day before the game. Um, but again, they're 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 an excellent team. They're they're a team that has not uh, blinked one eye when it comes to road play. Um, they've played their best basketball on the road, and our team is very well aware of that. Coach, you had a chance to take a step back and look at the game against Providence and, and kind of what you said post game. Did you ever feel like maybe I was a bit harsh, or were you even more harsh once you finally got to the practice field? No, I think if anything, um, there were some other things that I could have sprinkled in as well. Um, I felt like we foul way too much. You know, we foul when we have the ball. Um, you know, Providence had eight free throw attempts uh, because we missed a shot. They got the defensive rebound, and we somehow managed to figure out how to foul them so that they didn't have to earn it on the offensive end but only go to the free throw line um, for them not to return the favor. So again, we, we, we've got to be smarter um, basketball players. We've got to be more disciplined. And um, you know that, that would probably be what I would have added if it were last Saturday. Do you think guys have taken ownership of that this week? No, I sure hope so. When you look at the guys that are the captains, are they you know, rallying the troops or doing anything to kind of get everyone to see your message? Uh, I sure hope so. You know, again, 
um, you know, what happens in the locker room sometimes determines, you know, how, how your team performs and how your team responds. So, um, you know, we've, um, we've sent out the message and we'll see if message is received. Is the fouling thing not moving their feet? Is it being out of position, combination? That you uh, it's a little bit of just being undisciplined, you know, reaching when you shouldn't reach, um, waving the white flag when the other team gets a defensive rebound and just say, hey, it's, it's our turn to defend. Uh, we have to get back uh, and not, again, gambling, being undisciplined, reaching, um, you know, moving our feet. It's a combination of everything. And, um, again, it's, it, you know, we're not, we're not miles away. Uh, but this game and who you play, um, you know, inches are the difference. And so we have to, we have to make sure that, that we're a better team this Saturday than we were a week ago. Chris, is it tougher to defend against a team that's more balanced like they are in scoring than having that one guy that you know that, that they can go to? Is it tougher? Yeah, absolutely. The more threats you have on the floor, the harder it is to guard. Um, you know, they've got uh, – when, when Teague is back on their team, which he has been, um, you know, he's gotten over the concussions. Now you got a bull in a china shop that you know knows how to post, knows how to seal, that draws contact, that scores around the rim, and then you complement that with you know terrific perimeter shooters and Oliver and uh, Fuquan Edwin and, and then Gibbs, who's a guy that's really difficult to keep out of the lane. You know there are some teams that you play like if you take one or two guys away, you know they're going to struggle to score, and that's that's not who Seton Hall is. And so uh, again, our team has great respect for the offensive firepower that's coming into our building tomorrow. Yeah, he's you know he's uh, you know a couple of days in, but that's um, you know there's going to be more time determined to you know make, make um, him make the right decisions all the time and get you know a part of this team again and rejoin our team. So uh, it's it's awfully early into it. So he could be back this year, you think? Or? Yeah, I mean I'm certainly uh, hopeful that he will be. Yeah. Coach, can you talk about Samaj? We saw the Samaj talk with him. You guys seem so quiet. Really? Well, I, I'd tell you that, um, you know, Xavier's a great place, um, great tradition, um, um, unbelievable kids, players, um, NCAA tournaments. But all that, with all that, in the, as a recruiting tool to Samaje, the number one reason he chose Xavier is because it was close to his family and close to home. And he wanted to represent uh, a school in his hometown. And it was hard for him to be away at Brewster Academy for a year. Um, but it also helped him grow uh, immensely. Um, and so, uh, you know, for Samaje, he's just, uh, he's a very, very loyal kid. Um, his family is, you know, unbelievably important to him, just like it is to so many people. But, you know, whether it's, you know, having his brother here at practice every once in a while, um, his mom stopping over, uh, family in the stands. I mean, I went, I went and recruited at a local uh, public high school um, game probably two or three weeks ago and I didn't publicize it to my team I didn't tell him and you know Samaje sitting in the in the game you know he just he loves the city of Cincinnati he loves his family and uh, it's been a good it's been a good match for him uh, to be here at home here at Xavier